Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield uh, myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized for such time as he may consume. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, this is the last, and uh, this is the last, right? Do we have one more? Yes, sir. Okay. In uh, the series of bills from the uh, Resources Committee, uh, and perhaps the last time uh, that uh, I'll be on the floor as ranking member and Chairman Hastings uh, will be on the floor as chairman. And I just want to thank my colleague uh, from Washington State uh, for uh, all of, uh, you know, the work we've done together. We obviously don't always agree on issues, uh, but uh, I think the Resources Committee has reported out more bills uh, and passed more bills in the House than any other committee in this Congress. We've been very active. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, the Senate will go along with a few that we have pending and uh, we will uh, get some of those bills uh, enacted into law. Uh, in particular, uh, I want to thank the Chairman for his partnership on uh, an issue absolutely uh, critical to the Pacific Northwest, which is the uh, management of the Columbia River System and the Bonneville uh, Power Administration uh, and the phenomenal uh, gift of uh, that uh, clean and inexpensive power uh, to our region uh, and, uh, and to the Western uh, U.S. generally. Uh, you know, we have some major issues uh, uh, looming, and particularly the negotiation or renegotiation or termination of the uh, treaty uh, with Canada regarding the Columbia River Treaty and a session that the, uh, that the chairman held uh, in, uh, uh, in his district uh, in, uh, in Washington State in uh, a cold day in February uh, was, uh, I think, very critical in, in helping move uh, that uh, discussion and debate in a productive uh, direction for all the st stakeholders and particularly critical for a uh, position of, of the, uh, you know, our region uh, in, uh, in this negotiation. Uh, I'm only hopeful that we'll soon uh, get the attention of the State Department uh, and uh, whomever else uh, they have seen fit to involve in this process and, and have a recommendation uh, from the State Department regarding modification, uh, termination of, uh, of that treaty so we can enter into meaningful negotiations uh, with the Canadians. So uh, the gentleman was uh, played a particularly uh, key role in that, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, and obviously, a lot of other work uh, on uh, forestry and, and other issues. Yes, I'd be happy to yield to the gentleman. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and if, since you opened up commending uh, Doc Hastings for his career in the Congress, I want to join you in that. Uh, we were both uh, discussing yesterday that we started our careers battling over California water when he came to the Congress and when I came to the Congress. And uh, on the last days of our legislative action, we will once again be discussing California water. Uh, that's the twist and the turns that this, uh, that this place takes with, uh, with legislation. Uh, but I want to thank him for his service and leadership of the Resources Committee. He knows how dear those issues are to me, my many years of service on that committee. And uh, uh, thank you for your fairness in dealing with a lot of the issues. Uh, and uh, it's, it's Mr. Fazio pointed out it wasn't about whether we always agreed, but it's about whether or not you could work with one another with some respect and figure out where you could get together on particular issues. But thank you very much, Dr. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. Uh, reclaiming my time. Uh, so directly uh, to, the, uh, to the legislation uh, before us. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, for too long, uh, federal policies have unfairly disadvantaged uh, Indian tribes in Western Oregon and obviously elsewhere. Uh, around the country. Uh, after signing many treaties with the Western Oregon tribes, uh, the United States removed them from their original homelands throughout the western part of the state and put them on only two reservations, which were established at the time to house potentially people from more than 60 uh, tribal governments. Many of the tribes uh, confederated on these reservations far from their ancestral homes. Other tribes refused to leave their ancestral homes and were basically forgotten by the United States despite its promises uh, that it had made in treaty agreements with them. Uh, later in 1954, uh, one of the darkest chapters was uh, when uh, all but one of the Oregon tribes west of the Cascade Mountains lost their federal recognition in the Western Oregon Termination Act. The termination era, as scholars call it, was terrible federal uh, Indian policy, so bad that it was only 30 years later 
uh, that was formally rebuked uh, by Congress. Starting in the 70s, Congress began the process of restoring the Western Oregon tribes to federal recognition and of cleaning up the mess that the United States government had made in Western Oregon. In fact, I began my congressional career as an original sponsor of the Coquille Restoration Act, legislation to restore one of Oregon's terminated tribes. I partnered uh, with then uh, Senator Mark Hatfield uh, on that legislation, which was uh, later uh, enacted uh, into law. Uh, while six Oregon tribes are now federally recognized, it remains difficult for these tribes to function as the sovereign nations they are and to govern themselves as effectively as they could. Uh, shifts in federal Indian policy have made it uh, time consuming and expensive uh, for Western Oregon tribes and other tribes around the country uh, and the Department of Interior uh, you know, to work together on land into trust issues. These policy shifts have also deprived two of the tribes of sufficient land bases and has created a legal anomaly with regard to the Coquille tribes forest. H.R. 5701, the Western Oregon Indian Tribal Lands Act is long overdue. No cost, common sense bill. It will go a long way to helping resolve some of the problems the federal government uh, and its uh, policy shifts over the last century or more than a century uh, have created for the Western Oregon tribes. This legislation clarifies on-reservation land into trust procedures for the Grand Ron and Siletz tribes so the tribes don't have to face uh, outrageous delays in dealing with the Department of Interior. The bill also makes good on a decades-old promises to restore land bases for the Coos and Cow Creek tribes, and it puts the Coquille tribes forest on an equal footing with those of other Indian tribes nationwide. H.R. 5701 deals only with Oregon issues, Oregon tribes, and Oregon constituents. All of the provisions in this Oregon Tribal Bill have received some form of consideration by both the House and the Senate. This package also enjoys bipartisan, bicameral support. The rarest of rare things, I'd say, in Washington, D.C. these days. I strongly encourage my colleagues here in the House uh, to join with me in passing this legislation swiftly uh, so we can get it over to the Senate. Uh, and hopefully uh, get the Senate to act uh, before uh, the hopefully soon looming adjournment of the 113th Congress. Uh, I would reserve the balance of my time. The uh, gentleman from Oregon.